I know you'll be disappointed because this is in fact not a clip about me showing you how to take a bath. This is a clip about how to prevent a disaster. Although it could be kind of the same thing. Anyway, this is a clip where I want to show you how I prepare for a typhoon. Now, the worst experience I've ever had with a typhoon was three days without electricity or water. So when I do my preparation, I do it assuming that I'm going to be without electricity and water for three days. First things first, water. Yes, do prepare some drinking water for at least three days and any other drinks that you might need to sustain and survive for three days. Also prepare flushing water for three days. I have a nice big tub where I can store enough water to flush toilets for three days as well as use it for a DIY cold bath if need be. If you don't have a tub, best you go buy some kind of container to store water or you could use your washing machine if you have one. Regarding food, supermarkets get kind of crazy around typhoon time, so don't leave your food shopping till the last minute. And while on the topic of food, if you have natural gas, in other words not gas bottles like these, you may also lose your gas, which would make cooking impossible. So if you do buy food, buy prepared foods like bread, fruits, you know, that kind of thing. If you do have the natural gas, make sure that your landlord checks your gas lines after each typhoon and earthquake. And if you do move house and you have the option to choose bottle gas over natural gas, I would say go for the bottle gas. It's just a lot safer in my opinion. Make sure you have some candles or torches that work and a couple of spare batteries perhaps. I also keep my laptop and phone fully charged at all times. The two biggest problems during typhoons are flooding and wind, which includes wind pressure. And by flooding, I mean if you have a scooter or a car that's parked in a basement, you might want to keep an eye on that basement for flooding. That very often happens in Taiwan. And wind, obviously you're not going to go outside because there'll be debris and stuff flying around. But wind pressure is something that a lot of people don't think about. So if you have doors or windows that are open and there's some kind of pressure difference inside your apartment, the wind will actually rip out the entire window, including the frame. So you'll often see shops uh, putting tape over windows and things like that. So if you are in an apartment with windows and doors, make sure that they are really tightly closed to prevent this kind of difference in air pressure inside your apartment. We have a tiny little garden outside and uh, chairs falling over and blowing away really isn't that big a deal, but chairs flying up into the air and smashing into windows, that could be a problem. So if you have a balcony or an outside area, make sure that everything that's loose that could possibly crack a window is safely stored away. If the weather turns really bad, the government will order schools to be closed and sometimes also order schools and offices to be closed. There's a few ways that you can find out whether or not schools and offices will be closed. You can of course check out my blog page where I'll post updates. Alternatively, you can also check out the ICRT website for their news updates. Or you can check the official government page and I'll add that URL link on my blog page. My first typhoon in Taiwan, I was really freaked out. I thought cows were going to come flying by the window or something. In the end, it wasn't that much worse than a windy day in Cape Town. Now that being said, Cape Town has vicious winds. The best thing to do is not to panic, but be smart. Prepare for three days. I mean, worst case scenario, you're going to have three days of extra food and water. And that's a hell of a lot better than having a toilet that can't flush for 24 hours in this Taiwan summer heat.